Welcome back from, from this little break. And uh, the day continues. We still have some more fascinating content left. Um, we've had a lot of diverse voices, a lot of fascinating demonstrations. Thank you so much for everybody who has collaborated and shown us their art, their ideas, and their projects so far. And next, uh, we have what we call uh, Caribbean Spice, which is going to be a segment where we're going to hear from a handful of different developers who live in some of the islands in the Caribbean. So I can't wait to hear their stories and their experiences. So please join me for Caribbean Spice. Hi, everyone. Hey. Okay. Oh, wow. Hey. <laughs> All right, so we're live. Um, and I think we should just do introductions really, really quick. Uh, just want to say welcome, everyone, to, I guess, Caribbean Spice, um, <laughs> which is going to be a small presentation on some of the creative projects that are coming out of Jamaica and the wider Caribbean. My name is Glenn Henry. I am the quote unquote loudest member of the JGDS. Um, which is a grassroots collective of nerds who want to learn more about the business and craft of interactive media. And I'll now pass it on to our other co-host, Graham. Hey, so I'm Graham Reed, also known as Graham of Legend. And I am a Jamaican born and raised game developer, currently living in New York. And I'm working on a game called Super Space Club. And finally, on the call, we have Zane. Hi, um, Zane, also known as Just Join. Uh, uh, I guess founder of Just Life Studios and uh, currently working on a game called Wash Bear Workshop with my team. All right, cool. Thanks, guys. So just to give some kind of context to the scene here in Jamaica, um, it's still very much growing. It is nascent. Uh, a lot of it is aspirational self-taught self devs going out and taking inspiration from their favorite projects and trying to replicate and improve on them. Um, what we're trying to do with the Jamaica Game Development Society, that's what JGD stands for, is kind of just provide a collective, a hub um, to share ideas, to get feedback, to kind of build up a voice, to kind of find what makes a Jamaican or a Caribbean game a Caribbean game. You know, find that nugget of culture and expand on it and build on it. So that is us in a nutshell. Um, I think we can also probably just speak on some of the other challenges that we, we we're trying to work through. Graham, you want to uh, speak on that a little bit? Challenges that we're working through as a community? <laughs> yeah, as a community. Uh, so we've been, I would say we've been around for the better part of a decade now, like at least eight years, I would say. But it, it, what? I feel old, sorry. <laughs> yeah, we've been around for like at least eight years. And for the longest time, it was just like four or five of us in a Hangouts chat or on Slack or on maybe in WhatsApp. I don't remember where it even started. It's just, we, we've been all over the place in Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, but as of late, it's really been picking up steam. I think one of the biggest challenges for us was just to actually get people interested in game dev or even realize that it's a thing that they can be interested in mm -hmm. and actually can do now that the internet is a, is a vast place of knowledge and tools and all that stuff. Uh, well, yeah, I, th I think that's been the, the biggest challenge. What, what, what else would you, you, you say? Um, I think that kind of touches on it, like that knowledge transfer, that, that, that's the main thing, as well as finishing, right? I think, yeah, um, yeah. yeah as well as finishing, just getting that um, ship it muscle um, built up. 
Um, yeah, one of the, from the hobby space to more of like a professional space for sure. Yeah. I think the hope is that like, you know, as more and more people come in, like more creative uh, projects can um, pop out, right? Uh, yeah. Some of the, one of the, one of the projects in particular kind of really capture, tries to capture that cultural aspect and they're ex exploring it a bit. Um, one of the videos, one of the trailers that we'll be showing. Um, I think another thing that we've kind of been able to do coming up, coming with the JGDS is, um, you know, finding and creating teams. Uh, Zane, I think you can speak on to that challenge and how you're kind of navigating that a little bit. Oh, you're muted, Zane. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, I don't know. I don't know when I did that. Um, but yeah, that's been a major issue from the start, um, especially when, you know, you personally have a strong, like one strong skill or a strong skill set and you're missing some stuff and you need to get those people. It's been difficult finding people um, within the Jamaican and Caribbean space simply because um, they're, the community is small. I mean, uh, the existing community is small and inviting people into community is not a problem, but finding them, people aren't stepping out with these skills, realizing that, you know, this is an art form that they can take part in. But what I did was I basically bid Doing it by myself inspired the people around me to actually be like, you know, yeah, I can do this because coming, I was coming from traditional software development. Um, other members in the team were coming from traditional media as well in music, writing, and in traditional software development for the QA as well. So it was like, why can't we do this? So let's, if other indies are doing it, let's bring our skill sets together, learn from each other and um, put it together. I was lucky enough to have those people around me in general and through my own efforts by myself, they were inspired to join. So that's one route, <laughs> I guess it worked out. Um, but that, that's been the major challenge for me and still is because I still need an artist. <laughs> I still need an artist, um, okay. but yeah. All right, cool, that's awesome. Um, so yeah, I think we've kind of touched on who we are, what we're trying to do and some of the challenges we face. So I think we can probably just put into the trailers now um, and showcase them and you can see what we're working with so far. Enjoy.
all right so small technical difficulties but yeah um we have a couple projects we're going to see if we can coordinate a bit and share share it um the first thing that we want to showcase was uh wash bear workshop which is a what is wash bear work <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, Wash Wash Bear Workshop is an off kilter physics at distance puzzle game, where I mean you control an AI arm which is built by uh, some hyper intelligent raccoons um, in their quest for sugar. So I mean, you are this AI just trying to figure out how you can serve your raccoon overlords um, through living in this raccoon engineered body. So, I mean, you, you figure out their instructions to just complete the tasks that they give you. And it's been, <laughs> it's, it's an interesting game. Yeah, definitely. I, can say. <laughs> I, I remember when you gave us the, the demo to test out and it was insane. Like just getting through the first couple levels on tutorial, I kept breaking that robot arm, super, super fragile. I, mean, I love raccoon. that the, the, their goal is to get sugar. That's like, I thought you were going to say their quest for world domination. No, it's just, no, no, no. they just want sugar. No, no, they just want sugar, want bro. Sugar. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they're simple. They're simple. So, like, why, why physics-based puzzle? Like, I think you had stated that there's a bigger goal behind the game. But yeah, there's... There's an overall um, larger idea that I was trying to construct, um, like the controlling of the arm in like each joint on, um, on the arm and everything was just supposed to be one simple mechanic for something else. But um, I kind of just was having too much fun with it because all I was trying to do was build a prototype to just pick something up and see how it would be. That's how can I make sense. controls for that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it just ended up in that direction. It was just like, um, I was just like, okay, I guess we can make some physics puzzles here until um, we figure out the rest of the stuff for the other game, the the overarching actual game. So you'll see more of the wash bears as we develop that out. I mean, I didn't even know what a wash bear was until you said this. <laughs> like, I mean, because we don't have raccoons, and that didn't like, like it didn't. Oh, no. like, oh that's what a Oh, the hand wash. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. I'm not stuck in my head anytime I see the track. Oh, that's a wash, wash bear. bear. Yeah. Wash bear. All right, cool. Cool. And you have like a team of four. Like it's you, Nick. So it's, yeah. 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 Nick's Horatio and Driz. And um, yeah, we saw we have a writer, QA, music. Um, I'm mostly game programming and just trying to make it happen. Um, just trying to do the thing. Um, people are, everyone trained in traditional, the traditional form of their art form. And here we are making games. Cool. Cool. That's actually pretty awesome. Um, there was a talk recently at GDC just talking about non conventional paths um, mm -hmm. game dev. And I think like, if once it, it's out of, of the vault, I think you guys should check it out because it's, it really kind of encapsulates what you're trying to do. Like you, you have your traditional software background, uh, you have a mm -hmm. traditional writer, um, and then just seeing how we can contribute to a creative project in a really interesting way. Um, Graham, Super Space Club, what about you? What's your experience working on that so far? Uh, it's, it's, been a, it's been a very fun journey because it started just as my second game that I've been working on. But it started at a time when I was still had a full time job. I still had a full time job. And so it's mostly been like two or three years of just nights and weekends of me just doing the thing, me trying to get this, this game done. It's not even a big game, you know, but because again, just two hours here and there, um, it's been, it's taken me longer than I'd like. But recently I left my full time job. So now I'm doing the full time game dev thing. And yeah. No, it's been like a completely different. I mean, it's kind of nerve wracking because I, I'm my own. I'm in charge of my own destiny now. But um, it's it's been really fun and fulfilling because I can actually focus on actually making the game now. I don't have to worry about any anything else, fun, not fun, whatever. Just make the game. And yeah, it's also a very simple 
looking game, as you'll say, it's beautiful, but but minimal. Because mm. my background is just a more on like Zane, it's more of a art background. Mm. And so it's not it hasn't been anything too difficult for me to do. It's just more again, just just the time. Just the time and to, to, to actually get it done and polish it. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Can imagine. I mean, you'd have touched on like some superhuman time management skills to try and juggle a full-time job on game day. No, it's a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trying to juggle a full-time job plus game dev, and then mm-hmm. recently a child is is a lot. <laughs> it's, it's a lot, yeah. Um, all equally rewarding things, but you can at some point your hands get tired, you know. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. All right, so like what kind of motivations did you want to kind of, what motivated you to kind of make the game and what do you kind of want to explore with uh, Super Space Club? First off, I, I just, I think I've said it before, but I need to say it again. Again, the name is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Super Space Club. Um, yeah, what's, so I've been, I've, I've been playing games since, ever since I can remember, like my first game, as I remember playing at least was Super Metroid when I got my Super Nintendo at age four, I think. So I've always been a fan of games, been a fan of good gameplay, like all that stuff. And so, yeah, I just wanted to make a very fun space shooter, but I didn't want it to be a typical bullet hell, a thousand bullets on screen, your precise control trying to dodge. I wanted to have more of a, a physics based feel to it. So you're actually trying to drift, space drift and like, just go around in the environment. Um, and also, a lot of times I've been playing these games and they've been very like hardcore techno or just like some very blood brushing music, which I mean, is fine. It, it, it's, it fits the vibe, but I wanted something different, you know? And <laughs> even before the lo-fi wave became a thing, lo-fi hip hop music kind of thing happened, I've always kind of liked that, that chill vibe. And so I was like, hey, I'm going to make a game that's, it's not easy. But it still gives you, it still makes you feel relaxed when you're playing it somehow. Like a good, it's like a good balance. Um, and yeah, I, I just wanted to make a game that could check all those boxes. Like something you can replay endlessly, something that's fun to play, gives you enough challenge, but also doesn't stress you out and looks good, sounds great. The, my sound designers, shout out to Fat Bar, they're amazing. As yeah. hopefully you hear in the trailer, like they're ridiculously talented. Um, so yeah, that, that, those are my main inspirations. And Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse made me look the way it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, have to say that. All right. So while we look into the technical issues before we can cut through to show the trailer, just want to give some background for like my own personal project, because I am also a developer and designer myself. Um, the face and fingers behind Spider-Man Studios. Um, which has been the vehicle for me creating my project for the past is it eight years? It feels like eight years. It's been a while. I uh, haven't really been keeping track. And my latest project is called Westside Pocket, which is this rhythm-based or timing-based um, monster hunting RPG. I kept on thinking about like games like Pokemon and Monster Hunter and stuff like that. And I really love those games, but as I grow older, I find that I have less and less time to sink into them. So I want to see if there's a way to distill that experience, that um, that getting stronger, that leveling up experience into something that is, you know, can fit in your pocket, right? So that was an idea for the creative direction. And then uh, from a business standpoint, why it's free on mobile and why the model is set up the way it is, I wanted to explore something I've kind of been pointing as art as a service, which is really a content marketing strategy for creatives, which you see a lot of digital artists do it, um, a lot of YouTubers do it, where they're releasing this, um, they release their project or their stuff for free and kind of move people along their pipeline or funnel. It feels very me when you say marketing from a user. <laughs> Uh, the idea is basically by showing your authentic process, you and um, engaging with a wide audience, you inevitably find people who are willing to support you. Um, mm-hmm. I like that idea and I like that it feels authentic, it feels genuine, and it feels like a more sustainable and fair model to everyone involved than some of the 
more uh, mm, less savory tactics that I've seen people explore, especially in the mobile space. So mm -hmm. that's the story behind Quest Light Pocket. It's a little bit more than poking um, a sheep dragon with a stick. <laughs> but yeah, um, that's my project. Um, I want to see if we can probably put over to the trailers again. Um, probably not just the Wash Bear Workshop one, because that one is a more of an interview where you get the feedback from the entire team, right? Yeah. Ah, we're working on it. All right, no problem. Um, Touch on something hello. interesting, Glenn. Like, hmm. I found that, of course, as you get older, as you have more responsibilities, hmm. I too, even though I love these bigger experiences, I, I've been making a lot of time for like the very, basically in the games, like a lot of small experiences or in, experiences you can just pick up and play. Mm -hmm. And so when you said that, that's also something that resonates with me because I've been trying to make something where you don't need to devote like five hours every time you sit down and play. You can just play for 10 minutes. You can play for 10 hours if you want. It's up to, <laughs> up to you. Um, yeah, it, it's, I, I'd love to make some huge game, but yeah, just have time for that. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. Uh, I mean that 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 is also why i'm really interested in, in the mobile space right now i know right. a lot of right. a lot of developers aren't um as keen on it because it has kind of turned into this playground of shallow experiences um i know that uh the apple and google they're trying to build out some kind of curated space to kind of push for that because that's not to say that um those smaller experiences those casual experiences don't have a place they want to be an art style gaming is for everyone everyone deserves a, uh, to play how they want to play yeah i think mm -hmm. it's more it's more so the marketplace right like all mm -hmm. those games have a place but when you want to create something that's more i would say meaningful i guess as opposed to something that's just quick and fun just to play you need to make something more meaningful those don't really get as much of a spotlight because they aren't as quick and easy to play and when you're making mobile games it's, it tends to be more about the ads i guess or like just trying to make money through the, the space i don't know yeah it, it, it can <laughs> translate poorly there um but yeah i i do want to explore the space more to see if there's something that can make sense and just segueing nicely into like development and design processes i really admire how zane and zane's team has been you know looking at a big picture idea and then narrowing it down and focusing on, on one thing and then just yeah. build on it over time. So, um, it, 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 it's an interesting way of doing development and it really comes from like a technical technical um, background. I, I'm going to use technical um, <laughs> Was the design process influenced by Agile? Yeah, it's actually completely Agile. Everything about everything about it is actually just agile. It's we set out to make it, and it was just like, okay, how can I scope this down? And it was just like, I'm going to scope it down as far as possible, and then we're going to just iterate and see what happens. Um, it's the reason why um, I'm trying to get it to a point where I can be like, okay, this is the base thing that I'm going to put out there so people can play it, and just possibly just iterate on more levels as I go along, build out more systems um, for the other project as well. Because the point is to build out bits and pieces for the actual game, add them into this game, because I mean, this game just ha it has a core, that's all it has right now, and it needs that meat around it. So we're just going to iterate on it till we build out all the mechanics for the other actual game and go from there, I mean, and that's the iterate. It could be we build a bunch of levels and then call it this is it and then make a two. And it could be, I don't know, we're just going forward with what are we building and just keep building it. No, that's, that's how it feels, right? Yeah. I actually think that's a very, very smart approach. Um, one of the things, uh, there's two things. This is this can go in two directions, but one of the things that I think happened, especially with our own community, not in a hobby sense, right? Is that since we're all self-taught, we all have that dream game idea, right? That mm -hmm. you know, the MMO RPG that you want to build, the GTA mm -hmm. set in Kingston that we keep getting pitched. Um, mm -hmm. That's the biggest pitch. <laughs> um, like that idea is good and that dream is great, but making games and making well, 
yeah, making software and then making games specifically is hard and getting that kind of validation that user-led design is important. Yeah. So yeah. I, again, I really admire how you can look, how you've managed to take this big dream and it's fancy, it's quirky. And you're like, you know what? Let's just focus on the raccoons and sugar. And <laughs> sugar. Okay. Right? Some nice sweet brown sugar dog. Right? Straight from the plantation. Um, and then take that and make a physics puzzle puzzle out, out of it. Like even you said that it needs more meat, but just looking at the core that um, I've played so far, it was frustrating, but it's like it was that was the point, and you guys leaned into it like. Uh, from a design standpoint, like the controls are purposely obtuse and they're not intuitive, but eventually you get it and you're there pressing everything on your well, keyboard. Well, and... Once you get it, you know, you feel like a wizard. <laughs> and I'm just there like, like raccoon ears yeah. and everything. Like, exactly, and, like, yeah. That's yeah. definitely a feeling I was going for, which is why um, you the instructions aren't clear because I mean, how does our robot, how does our raccoon who built our robot teach our robot how to like function, right? So the instructions are tells you the robot? task. How, <laughs> what, they have hands. You can't trust raccoons. You cannot trust mm, raccoons. Fair, 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 like fair. watch Planet of the Apes. Planet of the Raccoons would be just as bad. Trust me. Like you can't trust them, but they build machines and I mean, it's just our interpretation of what it would be like if you were a robot learning to use a robot okay. body built by raccoons. All right, that's cool. Makes sense. Makes sense. I mean, getting that kind of feedback and working on projects in that way, I feel like it's the smartest approach, but I think that also is influenced from my own technical background because I'm a computer scientist um, by education and some form of manager by trade. Um, but there is another problem that I'm hoping that we can solve with the JGDS specifically, which is finding that cultural voice. Um, I think Graham and I have had this conversation multiple times about like what is a Jamaican game dev, what is a Caribbean game dev, uh, what is a Caribbean and Jamaican game. Um, because as a country, we have a trend to highlight and focus on the things that are obviously Jamaican, like. You know the Jamaican guy at the at the at the sports match, and you know the Jamaican guy at whatever game. Why they're the ones in the flag shirt, and they're the ones with Jamaica glasses, and they're the ones. <laughs> oh, this! They're <laughs> very, 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 very proud of where we come from and our culture. And I kind of want to see how we meaningfully translate that into other creative output. I mean reggae music, for example, dancehall, those are very much stamps of Jamaica. Mm -hmm. But two different, two different vibes almost entirely, right? And I know that within us, we have like this entire multitude and our motto is out of many one people. Mm -hmm. So I want to see if there are any other new avenues. Like, can there be like a lo-fi Caribbean aesthetic that translates? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's reggae. It's it's reggae. But, uh, no, kind of like, like it becomes a genre of game itself, yeah. right? Like soccer that you can match beats to, like them type of things. Like I want to see how these ideas translate, and I know that we need to get our technical skill up to a point before all those creative ideas start bubbling up and actually yeah. see the light of day. Um, um, yep, I have so many ideas around those things that you're talking about, but the technical skill to put into it, especially with the teams that we have are so small, um, from one to four, one to two people, to three to four, like, like the dreams are big and mm -hmm. the people are willing, but the, the skill is not yet there in a lot yeah, of the like, houses. When we're making something that's culturally relevant, something that we want our people, our country to be proud of, you don't want to just make something. You know, you want to actually exactly. make something that actually has some substance in all yeah. in all aspects, all um, like in the in the, the the gameplay, the narrative, the music, the story, the visuals, everything. And so I think I feel like that's why it's been so hard. Like we have to start with things that we don't. I wouldn't say that we don't care about, but things that aren't as tight. So or... close to the hearts, yeah. Exactly, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, and I think we tell you not to start with your biggest projects first because yeah. it, just, it just won't get done. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for me, one of the things that I don't want to happen is I don't want to like go all in on something that is directly um, like like died in the wool in Jamaica and then somebody takes it up and plays it and says, this is not Jamaica. Like that feels, that's a fear for me personally. That feels daunting. And I want to be able to be able to um, creatively express that with authenticity. I keep using that word, and that is really intrusive for a yeah. right? Yeah. right? Like, I know I am a Jamaican. All right, cool. Trailers are up. Ah, Hello, good morning. Wait, it can hear me, right? Uh, Minnie, your translator? Ah, respect, Killy. Yeah, man, it can't hear you. Let me put one thing there in it. Uh, microphone? Yeah, man, that thing there. Anyway, um, here it is. So we'll make a very infiltrate the ends, you see me? Why, why, why do you have to use that language module? Oh, you mean, man? This is bad like yours. We need you to perform some tasks and learn. Test your lower actuation motor. Proud to present our work in progress, Washbear Workshop. I'm Zane Francis, lead programmer and lead designer at JustDev. I'm Joel, and I'm a game designer and game writer at JustDev Studios. I am Danai Williams, I'm the head of QA and a game designer at JustDev Studios. I am Adrian Hemans, I'm lead composer at JustDev Studios. So, what is Washbear Workshop? Washbear Workshop is an off-kilter puzzle game where you play as an AI controlling a robotic arm built by three hyper-intelligent raccoons. Yeah, we're serious. The three raccoons present you with deceptively complex challenges that you as the arm must solve using your various mechanical joints. Trial and error takes on new dimensions as you question your creator's intentions and the, the futility of all existence in this heartwarmingly enraging experience. So the seed of this idea sprang from an expansive team brainstorming session. I pitched a concept in which a trio of intelligent raccoons schemed to pull off a big heist. The team laughed and we moved on. But when our lead programmer decided to prototype a mechanic within the concept, the seedling of the idea ended up growing some branches and leaves. What say you, lead programmer? Well, with the crazy idea from our brainstorming, I set out to create a bite-sized game for a single mechanic from that larger project. Well, since I'm here talking about Watchbear Workshop, I can say that I failed at that. I just wanted to create a game that made a simple task tedious. Drink the water. A simple task you do every day without thought, but what if you had to think about controlling each joint in your arm, each bone in your hands? That's when it gets interesting. What if you're a robot learning to control your body gear by gear to serve your raccoon overlords? With the wonders of raccoon engineering, we are able to create such an experience. With the help of our chief engineer, chief raccoon engineer, Linny, of course. As I was working closely with Linny, building the experience, I realized that mechanically I was having fun with this simple mechanic and seeing how much I could do with it. Then I began to revel in the torture of tedium I was about to put my friends through. From there, the more I added to make it more appealing and playable, the more it grew. 
it was a challenge i think figuring out what the game was and how to scope it how to make gameplay about simple tasks interesting but i think we've got it down i have to say so far that the greatest thrill has also been watching our playtesters and the scornful looks that they right. glance at me so when they're... we've got to showcase a little bit of watch bear workshop and you know you, you kind of spoke about the process of iteration and how the game eventually became you know raccoons who watch sugar um we already covered that into the like we've covered that pretty extensively and yeah. why that process is so cool um there's another game that we haven't mentioned and that's because um the developers themselves haven't been able they weren't able to participate but i have to give a shout out to the pinnacle brothers and street boy ja which when I'm playing, when I'm looking at that game, I'm smelling the sea. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? I can't wait to give it. And we're just going to showcase some of the other projects in the trailers for SAC and for Psych, as well as Street Club. Yep. Yeah. All right, we're back again. All right, great. And that's our, our showcase so far. We got to see a glimpse of some of the projects that Jamaicans are working on right now. Um, we hope to, you know, build on that and kind of cover some of the problems that we're facing and the directions that we are going towards. We're hopeful and we hope that you guys continue to check out their work and support us. Any final words, Graham, Zane? Um, Super Space Club comes out this year on <laughs> Xbox and PC. You can go to superspaceclub.com, check it out. And big up everybody watching, big up model, big up all the people. <laughs> thank you, thank you for supporting us. It means a lot.